All right, welcome to the channel. In recent times, there has been a real resurgence in the use of various psychedelic substances for therapeutic purposes. But of course, these chemicals have a long and varied history. Did you know that the term psychedelic was actually invented by a doctor in Saskatchewan during the 1950s? Over the course of that decade, Saskatchewan was home to some of the most important psychedelic research in the world, and it would influence people such as the legendary Aldous Huxley, as well as Bill Wilson, one of the co-founders of Alcoholics Anonymous. And so I wanted to do a short video summarizing this interesting bit of Saskatchewan history. I'll also share some further resources if you're interested in learning more about the subject. And if you haven't already, then please consider subscribing to my channel. So back in 1944, Saskatchewan residents elected the first socialist government in North America under the legendary Tommy Douglas. As the new premier of this province, Tommy Douglas promised to dramatically reform the healthcare system. Over the next several years, he would build the framework for a national program of Medicare. And as he began those reforms, he recognized the need to invest in medical research alongside public policy changes. He would recruit cutting-edge researchers from within Saskatchewan and beyond to create a culture of experimentation in the province. In 1950, the provincial government of Saskatchewan hired Abram Hoffer, a recent medical graduate, to establish a psychiatric research program in Regina. According to Hoffer, megavitamin therapy and nutritional interventions were potentially effective treatments for cancer and schizophrenia. In 1951, Dr. Humphrey Osmond arrived in Saskatchewan from the UK. Dr. Osmond had developed a strong interest in hallucinations and psychotic disorders during his practice in London. Osmond would become clinical director and later superintendent of the legendary Saskatchewan Mental Hospital in Weyburn. This infamous hospital opened in 1921 and developed into one of the largest of its kind in North America. Like many other similar institutions, the Weyburn Mental Hospital was overcrowded and the conditions in the facility were quite poor, including backed up sewers and poor ventilation throughout the building. Honestly, it sounded like a bit of a hellhole. Dr. Erica Dick, who is a professor of history at the University of Saskatchewan, has done extensive research on this topic. According to her research, about 70% of the patients admitted to the Weyburn Mental Hospital never left the facility. When Dr. Osmond arrived in Saskatchewan, he was determined to transform and improve healthcare at the Weyburn Hospital and beyond. Soon after he arrived in the province, Dr. Osmond met fellow psychiatrist Abram Hoffer, and over time they became significant collaborators. They were connected by a desire to improve mental health care and support the provincial health care reforms happening in Saskatchewan. Osmond and Hoffer's research program quickly developed two significant objectives. First, Dr. Osmond proposed that LSD mimicked the psychotic effects of schizophrenia and that by going through an LSD trip, healthcare providers could better understand their patients' experiences. And so healthcare staff, under his guidance, would voluntarily take LSD, often at home with their wives helping the process, in order to gain valuable insight into patients' mental states. At this time, LSD was still in an experimental phase, and it could easily be obtained from a Swiss manufacturer. Osmond and Hoffer also thought that if psychosis could temporarily be created by giving someone a mix of chemicals, then a true psychosis might be the result of chemical imbalance. This hypothesis encouraged researchers to look at brain chemistry when studying disorders like schizophrenia. The second major research objective concerned the treatment of alcoholism. Osmond and Hoffer suggested that an LSD trip was a transcendent experience and often mirrored patients' accounts of hitting rock bottom. They postulated that a single large dose of LSD in combination with psychotherapy could give patients powerful insight into dealing with their addiction. These alcoholism studies, which followed patients for up to two years, showed 50 to 90% recovery rates. They began publishing their results in medical journals and their research quickly drew attention. In March of 1953, Dr. Osmond received a letter from well-known British author and philosopher Aldous Huxley after Huxley learned of the research being done in Saskatchewan. Aldous Huxley would become a legend in the psychedelic world, and he is the author of the legendary 1932 book Brave New World. Osmond would fly to Los Angeles to meet with Aldous and Maria Huxley and brought them a small supply of mescaline. This meeting would turn into a friendship that lasted until Huxley's death in 1963. Their friendship also produced the term psychedelic. In a letter written to Huxley, Osmond wrote the following, quote, To fathom hell or soar angelic, just take a pinch of psychedelic, end quote. In 1957, Osmond presented the term psychedelic in a medical paper, and obviously it would become a regular word in the English language. 
Dr. Osmond would also participate in a Native American church ceremony in which he ingested peyote, regarded as sacred by many First Nations people. This was arranged by the Red Pheasant Band, who would put together an all-night ceremony at Kando, Saskatchewan, which is near North Battleford. Dr. Osmond would later publish his experiences at the ceremony in an official report. And then Aldous Huxley was not the only person outside Saskatchewan who recognized the potential in this psychedelic research. Bill Wilson, who was one of the founders of Alcoholics Anonymous, had his own significant mystical experiences, and he even took LSD with Dr. Osmond in 1956. Wilson was quite inspired by this research in Saskatchewan, and he would be a strong advocate for the use of LSD to treat alcoholism. Many others, including journalists, nurses, hospital directors, artists, theologians, and indigenous healers and shamans, began to seek advice from the Saskatchewan researchers. Their work also attracted notable colleagues from across the province, such as psychologist Duncan Blewett, who started the first psychology program at the University of Saskatchewan Regina campus, as well as Sven Jensen in Swift Current, who would help elevate the role of spirituality in addictions therapy. And so during the 1950s, Saskatchewan became an important destination for healthcare reforms and psychedelic research. In particular, their alcoholism studies were very promising, showing high rates of recovery. At the time, hospital reforms also included changing the designs of hospitals themselves, as well as training psychiatric nurses to help patients avoid frightening hallucinations. During this era, psychiatric staff were trained to provide comfort and empathetic care, something that had been severely lacking in mental health institutions. This movement was later dubbed the Saskatchewan model and left a significant impact on mental health care across the world. However, by the early 1960s, this heyday of psychedelic research began to fade. This was partly due to slowing momentum behind Tommy Douglas's political experiment. Saskatchewan struggled to put the last pieces of Medicare in place after a divisive provincial election in 1960. In 1961, Tommy Douglas resigned as Premier to lead the federal NDP. And then in 1962, you had the doctor strike over Medicare. By the end of 1962, Canadians had learned about the horrible birth defects associated with thalidomide, and this sparked parliamentary debates on the classification of drugs and placed LSD under intense political scrutiny. Dr. Osmond would eventually leave Saskatchewan in 1961 to take a job at Princeton University. In the early 1960s, reports of a black market for LSD emerged in mainstream news, and alarms were raised of a drug that caused hallucinations, madness, and violence. And of course, psychedelic drugs were increasingly being associated with the hippie movement, which not everyone was a huge fan of. And so cultural attitudes towards psychedelics changed quite a bit, and research units came under pressure to halt their programs. Anti-drug campaigns throughout the 60s cemented an image of LSD as dangerous. And of course, the data compiled by the studies were not always robust by modern standards. They lacked proper controls, long-term follow-up, large sample sizes, and of course, modern scientific rigor. They also had problems with replication in other studies. Growing public and political concern over the use of LSD led to regulatory bans, and by the late 1960s, LSD research was largely halted in Canada and the US. And so I just wanted to present a brief summary of this interesting period of research in Saskatchewan history. During this decade, the province was a leading centre for psychedelic research in healthcare. Obviously, the 21st century has seen a renewed interest in psychedelics. They're now being used to treat everything from addictions and PTSD to end-of-life care. And the work done by Saskatchewan researchers in the 1950s showed some early signals of the effectiveness of these substances in various forms of therapy. If you're interested in learning more about the subject, Dr. Erica Dick has published numerous books on this, including Psychedelic Psychiatry, LSD from Clinic to Campus, and this is available on Amazon. There's even a graphic novel that was published in 2021 called Wonder Drug, LSD in the Land of Living Skies. This is based on the research of Erica Dick, and I would highly recommend it if you're really interested in this topic. And that's pretty much going to wrap this one up. I hope you found this one interesting and informative, and if you haven't already, then please consider subscribing to my channel. I upload a variety of Canadian content, and I typically upload something new about once a week. And if you want to support my channel further, you can buy me a coffee, and there's a link to that below. Thank you for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you that tunes into these videos. I hope you have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you next time.